you actually take CoQ10, you'll get better mitochondrial function, lower inflammation. It really helps with improving insulin sensitivity and blood sugar. All right, let's get into today's topic, which is coenzyme Q10. Now, before you turn off, it's really important. I'm going to tell you why it's going to give you more energy and help you live longer and help you deal with all sorts of chronic issues and why it is critical to energy, which we all want more of. So the more we study learn about the body, the more we learn about how phenomenal uh, our bodies really are. And one of the discoveries that was actually not too long ago in the 50s was of a compound called coenzyme Q10, also known as CoQ10. And it's an ex extremely important molecule because it helps our bodies take the energy that's in food and oxygen that we breathe and turn it into energy that our bodies can use in the form of ATP. You know, you might have taken high school biology, you learned about the Krebs cycle. Well, this is where, where it does its work, and it's so important. So what what is CoQ10, and, and, and why is it so important? Well, it helps cells make energy, which is what we all want more of. Now, you can buy it online, uh, you can get it at a supplement store, but it's actually produced by the body. Now, one of the things you might not know, and this is a little, little uh, tidbit here, is that when you look at the most common cholesterol drugs called statins, they actually block an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. Now, that is the enzyme that produces cholesterol, but it also is the enzyme in the body that produces CoQ10. And we see a lot of people with muscle pain and aching and mitochondrial injury, which is a little energy fact in your cells, when they take a statin, because I believe it interrupts CoQ10 production, which is necessary to make energy. And so your muscles can ache, you don't have energy, and you end up with this cellular damage. So it's a little it's a little important thing to remember, if you are taking a statin, CoQ10 is super important. In fact, there are even, quote, drugs out there that now combine CoQ10 and statins because they know it's so important. So Basically, your body makes energy in your mitochondria, these little subcellular organelles. There's anywhere from hundreds to thousands and thousands of these inside a single cell that basically take oxygen and food and combust them like an engine and produce energy. Your car runs on gas, but your body runs on this thing called ATP. But it's like an assembly line, and it needs all these different steps and all these different enzymes, all these different nutrients. And one of the key steps requires coenzyme Q10 to make energy. Now, when you get older, your CoQ10 production declines. It declines with other things like stress, chronic stress, toxins, even medications like statins. And, and when you have lower levels of CoQ10, it, it leads to this lower level of energy that we experience as we get older, but it also leads to some serious diseases. Now, uh, it's kind of a cool thing. It was, it was discovered, as I said, in the 50s and 1957, uh, scientists didn't really catch on to it for a number of decades, but uh, in 1978, uh, the Nobel Prize was awarded in chemistry to the scientists who understood how mitochondria make use of CoQ10 to make energy, and then the sciences exploded on CoQ10. Now, what are the benefits of CoQ10? What is, why should we care? What should we do? Well, it has a lot of benefits, simply from the fact that it's so key to making energy, which is key to everything else in our body. It's also a great antioxidant and it helps deal with free radicals that can damage our cells. Now, uh, when you see uh, CoQ10 in the research, you see low levels linked to all sorts of age-related diseases, whether it's dementia, Parkinson's, degenerative diseases. But the good news is that you can increase CoQ10 in your diet and it's good for you. But uh, I'm going to explain to you how it works, why it's important, and some of the amazing research that we now know about CoQ10 that can kind of implore us to be way more cognizant of how much we're getting. Even We can even measure, and I do this in my practice, measure CoQ10 levels. I see lots of people with low CoQ10 levels. And get the foods that increase CoQ10, reduce the reasons and exposures to things that cause us to reduce CoQ10 production, like the stressors and bad diet and all the normal stuff we talk about, the toxins, allergens, microbes, stress, um, all that, that actually cause uh, injury to the mitochondria and damage to our, our energy production. But it, it can do so many things. One of the areas where it's so great is heart health. Uh, in fact, there's a whole field of metabolic cardiology, which is how do we rejuvenate weak hearts? Congestive heart failure is really common. 
and it, it, it's a debilitating disease. Uh, the average life expectancy, once you get it, is about five years, which is like cancer. Most people don't realize that. But, you know, in the heart muscle is uh, and the brain are the highest concentrations of mitochondria. And so it's no surprise that CoQ10 plays a huge role in heart function. Uh, in one study, about 420 people with heart failure, where their heart's not pumping and the muscle isn't working because of lack of energy, if they were given coenzyme Q10, they had improved symptoms and they had a lower risk of dying from heart-related issues. Another study treated about 600 patients with CoQ10 or placebo and found that the group that got the CoQ10 was in the hospital less and had fewer complications than the placebo group and did better overall in their heart function. It's also important in the brain and migraines. Uh, it's something I use regularly for migraines, regularly for heart patients. Uh, by the way, everybody with a statin, which uh, I don't prescribe that often, but it can be useful sometimes, definitely gets CoQ10. But it's great for migraines. Uh, not all migraines, but but there are certain migraines because there's not such thing as a migraine. There are mig many, many different types of migraines that may be caused by gluten or hormones or the microbiome or mitochondrial issues or CoQ10 issues. And, and so there's a lot of reasons for migraines, even though they all manifest as the same symptom. And in functional medicine, we say just because you know the name of the disease, it doesn't mean you know what's wrong with you. Right? You know, the name of the disease is just the name we give to people who share a set of symptoms, but the causes may be different for different people. And sometimes it is a CoQ10 deficiency that's been linked to migraines because bad mitochondrial function can lead to more inflammation, oxidative stress, and any and that actually can result in these headaches. So when you actually take CoQ10, you get better mitochondrial function, lower inflammation. And researchers in one study found that high-quality CoQ10 supplements three times were three times more likely to reduce migraines than a placebo. Another study of about 1,500 patients found they had fewer and less severe headaches after they began taking CoQ10. So it's something, you know, you have to figure out why you're getting the migraine in the first place, but it can be a great adjunct. Uh, it also helps blood sugar control, and since about 93% of us are metabolically unhealthy and have some degree now of, of insulin dysregulation uh, and prediabetes, um, we see that it really helps with improving insulin sensitivity and blood sugar. Uh, and, and that's great because we are seeing just such a, a burden of this, and something we can do to actually mitigate that is to take a little CoQ10. It may even uh, prevent diabetes by reducing the number of fat cells that accumulate in the body that lead to more obesity and diabetes. I mean, it's an energy problem. Also, it's been uh, shown to help slow down or, or stave off reverse Alzheimer's. Uh, mitochondria are the main energy source in your cells, especially brain cells. And when your mitochondria are not functioning, it can kill the brain cells or make them not work well. And we see from the research that CoQ10 is actually neuroprotective. Um, Dr. Del Bredesen is a colleague and friend who's functional medicine to treat Alzheimer's and his recode program. It's a key part of the program. I also in Parkinson's disease, high dose CoQ10 can also help with tremor and symptoms. So, and Parkinson's is a mitochondrial issue. So most chronic illnesses and most diseases of aging are, are ultimately mitochondrial problems. And in my book, Young Forever, which is coming out in February, 2023, I talk a lot about the causes of aging and mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the 10 hallmarks of aging. And we need to learn how to take care of our mitochondria, protect our mitochondria. I mean, CoQ10 is just one part of the story, but it's an important part. Okay, so how do we get CoQ10 in our diet? What do we have to do? Well, if you think you're low in CoQ10, um, you're, and you're, you're maybe in your 30s or 40s or older, you're probably right. Uh, and you can get both CoQ10 rich foods and you can take a high quality supplement. I personally do both. Um, there, are, there are a number of foods that are really high in, in, uh, in, in CoQ10 probably stuff people don't eat that much, like organ meats, like liver, kidney, heart. Uh, you can actually take organ meat supplements now. <laughs> There's actually a great company called uh, Mighty Meats, which uh, kind of grinds them up into like a hamburger and mix it with some beef. So it, it actually doesn't taste weird or bad. And it, I had them. They're delicious. Uh, Mighty Meats, I don't have any relationship with the company, but they're pretty awesome. Um, and that's a great way to get CoQ10. Wild-caught, cold-water fish like trout, herring, mackerel, certain vegetables, spinach, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, fruits, and then like strawberries, oranges, nuts and seeds, all can help you boost your CoQ10 levels. Now, even if you're eating a healthy diet, I, I think it's important to supplement. And it's one of those key supplements I take. And I've had uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. I've had severe mitochondrial injury. I know what it's like. I know what it feels like. It's horrible. And I use CoQ10 for a long time to help me deal with this. And now I just take it as my general 
longevity stack. Uh, and so I basically take uh, ubiquinol, which is an easier used form of CoQ10. I use pure encapsulations um, and I use 100 to 200 milligrams a day for the average person. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Exercise is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Not over-exercising, not running a marathon, but doing a moderate amount of exercise every day really helps to lower inflammation. Stress, another big cause of inflammation. So another thing we can do about stress, it's out there, bad things happen.